Hello and welcome. Chef Pennington here in Austin, Texas, where we bring flavor to the table, and that's exactly what we're doing today. Today is Texas bolognese sauce. Bolognese sauce is traditionally a meat sauce with a bunch of really good vegetables that have been almost pureed down. We're also going to have a vegetarian option, which is just not adding the meat. Very delicious dish, guys. So let's create our base, our big flavor. We're going to be making a Southwest Maraqua. And we're going to start with our poblano. Now check out that stem. See how it's straight? That means it's not hot as the ones that have the curved stem. So that's a really cool way to shop for peppers in the store. And you'll see right there that the poblano is not very hot. I like using it in place of a bell pepper when I'm cooking personally. Not that I dislike a green bell pepper, but I go for that poblano. So you'll notice here that all the stems are pretty straight. I'm doing that so I don't have too much heat in my pepper starting out. And I'll be able to control that by the way that we're going to cut them here in a second. So Wajio chilies oh, brings the smokiness. It's a little hotter than a jalapeno. It's right in that area. Um, but it's a different type of heat since it's been dried. And it's just, it just brings that smokiness. It's really wonderful. So we've got some onion inside of the food processor. We're going to keep it going the whole time here. What we're going to do is we're pretty much going to puree our vegetables down into a paste, really. So we're getting some carrot in there. So this is a very traditional start of Ameriqua. Carrots, onion, and celery, French. Here's our wahio. I want you to be really careful, guys, whenever you're cutting this because it's waxy on the outside and your knife could slip. I've got a really sharp knife there and it still could potentially slip. So see, I'm cutting really long and straight away. Just be careful. I promise it's a little bit dangerous, you could say. But you definitely want to get it in there. The wahi is wonderful, and they're all over the place these days. So here is our poblano. We're going to use half of one. Now, when you're dealing with your peppers, one of the ways you can tell the heat that you're putting into your food is how much of the rib and seed. Now, everyone thinks that the seed is where the heat is, and it is, but it's really in the white part. It's called the, the rib, and that's where you're getting most of the heat. So if you cut that out, even with the jalapeno, guess what? It's not that hot anymore. That's where all the heat is, so... You really can control the heat yourself. So we're going to get some celery in there. Do not forget the little piece at the end. There is a lot of flavor in that, guys. Well, people usually discard it, which is understandable. But today's a new day, so you can start using it. It's delicious. And we've made a Southwest Maraqua. That is a major flavor bomb, guys. You could use it all over the place. Very delicious. You could start it for a sauce. You could go ahead and use that and just throw in some spaghetti. You're good. Maybe add a little tomato, too. So... Here's the meaty part of this. If you don't want to use some beef, we could just use the mushrooms here. I like the mushrooms because they're, they're often referred to as meaty, you know, when we're not doing the beef thing or the, the proteins. So be sure to remove the spores there underneath because it kind of tastes like dirt. Now, again, it depends on what you're trying to cook and what your goal is for this dish. We don't want it, so we're getting rid of it. It's going to bring too much muddiness, you might say, to the flavor profile that we don't want. And do that on the little guys. So that's a poblano. The little ones are cremini. And they're the same thing, believe it or not. Cremini is just a mini portobello. Sorry, portobello is the big one. Cremini are the little guys. And this is a really cool ingredient. Truffle butter. Don't have to use it. I happen to have it when I was cooking. I was like, I'm going to try this. Because the truffles are often referred to kind of like a mushroom a little bit. They have that luxurious flavor profile. Which a mushroom can have, but... Nothing beats the truffle in that accord. That's why they're usually expensive. The butter's not that expensive, though. That little thing costs about five, six bucks. So if you're feeling adventurous, grocery stores have it these days. It's really good. Sometimes you can find it in a can, and you can chop it up and add it to some butter and then roll it up into some plastic wrap and let it set up in the fridge. you got compound butter. So we're going to season and flavors. So we're not using a lot of salt. We're just getting a little bit going. That's some dried thyme. Mushrooms and thyme are best friends. If there's any ingredient you can throw at a mushroom, it's time. Dried or fresh, whatever you got. So I cooked half of the mushrooms without all of them because they would have just steamed. So I went half and let them caramelize and de develop some flavor. Then I added the rest of them in there. So we're not trying to hurry the, the cooking of the mushrooms so that they have a little bit of caramelization on them. Now we're going to add in our base. Now we're going to be adding some beautiful tomato products some tomato paste here in just a moment, which is going to really help us develop the color and flavor. No doubt. Definitely the flavor first, but it's going to make it beautiful as you saw in the picture in the, in the beginning. So right now it's a little bit, you know, looking a little bit like it needs a little health help help. And, uh, you want to cook down that Miracua base before we add in the meat and you'll notice it reduces down. It tightens up. So give it a little time before you add your meat in there. So let's taste, season, and adjust. 
see where we're at before we start adding some big flavors into here. It needs more salt. That's why we went very light in the beginning. We don't want to overdo it. We can't take salt out. Some fresh cracked pep black pepper. Everybody likes a little pepper usually, especially in the Southwest uh, Texas Boyonese. So there's some tomato paste. This is going to help the color a lot, but it's really deep in flavors, which we exactly want in a beautiful Boyonese sauce. Got some red wine in there. It's a half a cup. And we're going to add a little more just because this is coloring at this point when we start adding in the extra uh, tomato paste. And I love adding something fresh to really bring everything together. So that's some canned tomatoes. Got one in there. And we have a wonderful Texas bouillonnaise. Guys, it's so delicious. I was so shocked the first time I tasted it. I was like, I'm never making a normal bouillonnaise ever again. It was that good. So I really hope you guys enjoy this. Come let me know. Go ahead and subscribe. Hit the like button so you know when we post new stuff. All of our social media links will be below. We're going to have a recipe card, other tips, all that good stuff below. Be sure to check that out. And y'all have the best. Take care.